So hello, welcome to Maths at Derby, a online uh, online edition, and we're using Zoom for this. Um, and I've uh, nabbed a third year student in uh, mechanical and manufacturing engineering, Marius Sletz, to uh, to talk to us. So, but first of all, hi Marius, <laughs> how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, yeah. How's lockdown treating you? Oh, uh, it's actually quite alright. I mean, like. My isolation is so time consuming that I would be glued to the screen anyway. So Oh, so it's almost perfect really. No different. <laughs> okay, well, Marius um, uh, agreed to um, chat to us today um, about his dissertation, which he's got to hand in shortly. And his simulation, uh, his dissertation, sorry, is um, simulation, design and control of vertical access wind turbines. Now I think probably the first question, oh and he's got lots of maths so that's the, um, that, that's the, the reason we're really interested to, to chat to Marish about it. Um, but I think the first question is what is a vertical axis wind turbine? Uh, so probably everyone is used to like the huge horizontal axis wind turbines that we can see on a farm. The vertical axis wind turbine spins, well it's, it's the way it's, uh, it's in the name, it's vertical not horizontal. Uh, so it just spins around, and there, there's a lot of benefits to that because uh, the horizontal axis wind turbine they have to be positioned in the in the wind direction. Vertical axis wind turbine they work from any direction. Moreover, right. they are smaller and quieter than horizontal ones. So, and there's and and from your perspective, there's different efficiencies of wind traveling through it, um, and there are formulas um, that you yeah. need to use in order to uh, need to model that. Yeah, okay, cool. So, um, yeah, I mean, I see you've got a slide up now, which is all the different kind of rotor yeah. types and all the different um, efficiencies that they, that they have. Um, maybe that's worth talking about first off. Um, yeah, so as you can see, the, uh, the vertical axis wind turbine, they potentially can be more efficient than the horizontal axis ones. Uh, but then again, it depends on the shape and depends on the turbine solidity and all of the other parameters. Uh, the one I'm doing is a cyclogyro, is a lift-based turbine. So I, I'm rotating the turbine using the lift force generated by the blade, rather than using a drag force, uh, which is the same as the horizontal big ones, it's just in the vertical direction. And can you talk about the, um, the, the, the formulas to model that? Oh yeah, sure. Uh, so there are loads of different theories and they've been developed over like over a really long period of time. Uh, so the most simple one is the actuator to this theory, uh, which means that there is a infinitely thin uh, rotor disc and then there's the airflow passing through it, they can see in here. Uh, so the way it's modeled is based on the mass flow rate and the energy absorbed by the actuator disk. And the mass so flow we, rate is the, is the, is the wind mass, passing through it, that's the yes. originating wind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so okay. we can assume that the mass is always going to be the same. The only thing that changes is the, uh, it, well, the area slightly changes and then the uh, velocity of the wind changes because some of the velocity has been absorbed by the wind which is usually measured uh, with the axial interference factor A, I got it here, and the maximum of it is, uh, so the, it's in the range between 0 and 0 0.5, with 0 meaning no energy has been absorbed by the turbine, and 0 0.5 meaning that the, all of the energy was absorbed, uh, was absorbed by the turbine and the wind completely stopped by the end of the turbine, so the wind velocity is 0 after the turbine, which is never possible because obviously that doesn't happen in reality. Uh, and there comes power coefficient equation, uh, which actually states how much power has been extracted from wind. So it's a very simple equation, which is just a... So I was looking at the um, equation and chatting to you about it before. So um, I hope I've got this uh, the right. So the, this is the power coefficient and, the, and the it's a relationship between the top part of the formula, which is the design of the wind turbine, and the bottom part of the formula, which is the nature of the wind uh, uh, going through that turbine, and the nature of the wind that you're looking at, the bit of the nature of the wind you're looking at is speed, wind yeah. speed. 
so it's the is the ratio between power generated by a turbine and the power available in the wind. And it has been defined by a smart German guy in 1999, uh, Albert Betz, that the maximum of it is 59.3%. The proof of it is actually really interesting. I would definitely recommend someone to look it up. So, li so literally, there is there, there's been a kind of a, a, a theoretical calculation that says yeah. literally the maximum energy you can pull out of any wind turbine is 59.3%. Yes. That's, that's like the total maximum for anything. And it's been true for like the last hundred years, so it, it's it, the guy was right. And do any wind turbines actually achieve fifty nine point three percent, or is that just a theoretical maximum, and some get close to it and others In don't? In reality, some of them might get really close to it. Uh, theoretically, yes, but practically, it's not going to happen because there are so many other factors. Like uh, none of the wind is actually constant; like most of the winds are turbulent. Uh, so there, in, in practice, turbines, like really, really good turbine will achieve 70% of the best limit. So about 30, 40, 45% of it, 45. So yeah, it's going to be best limit is going to be the maximum CP for a really good turbine is 30 to 45%. That's a really good turbine. Okay, so your um, dissertation was, was modeling uh, these and uh, you found the mathematics for this in, uh, by finding a particular paper that had uh, yes. a lot of the mathematics in there. Um, and we'll put it below in the YouTube and the, the description if anybody kind of wants to look that up. But it's quite, but what you're saying there, it is actually quite complex. So um, that there is um, so many different things you can do with the design and so many different um, states that the wind can come at the wind turbine in yeah. and they're quite complex calculations yes they are uh, so well to first to, to get to this point I've done a CFD simulations which are computational fluid dynamic simulations and they just uh, I've analyzed a flow over just one airfoil uh, and then using other mathematical formulas I've, I've built a turbine around it uh, so for example, here I got like a tiny example of, because I, I needed to, for my model to work, I needed to know the forces acting on the blade at any point. Uh, so that diagram on the right hand side, that, that kind of elliptical type pattern is, that's your blade. Yeah, that's your blade, that's your airfoil. Air uh, and then on the left hand side, you can see the flow around it. Like you can actually see on this, at this particular angle of attack, the flow separated. And uh, the contour is the velocity. So usually the one around green is a, is a free stream velocity. And then you can see at some point, like when the airflow goes through the wind and at a specific angle of attack, it actually the flow separates and there are vortices created that actually drag the blade out of it, kind of. Uh, what, did, what software did you use for that? For CFD simulation, I've used ANSYS, uh, which was actually a lot of fun to, to learn. And it, it's a really user-friendly, actually, software, and there are lots of uh, online tutorials on it, so I would strongly recommend anyone who is actually interested in fluid dynamics to, to give it a go. Uh, that's what I did. And, and then for the mathematical simulations, what software did you use for that? Uh, I've used mainly MATLAB for mathematical simulation and Simulink within MATLAB. Oh, well, that's really exciting because um, in first year we've been using uh, mathematical uh, uh, software, we've been using uh, MATLAB and we're aware that there's Simulink. We may use that later on. Um, and if I just, I actually um, contacted our professor and I said I was, uh, I said I was chatting to you and I said, are we going to do any of this in, given that Derby's very strong on kind of engineering and so on and would mathematics link in with that? Um, and so that was um, uh, Dr. Avidya Bagdasar and he said, we do some modeling of vibrating strings and population models in maths modeling year two. And we solve the heat and wave equations in modeling with differential equations year three. Also two stats modules, operations research in year two and optimization techniques in year three. So um, have you done any of those in um, uh, areas in, in your course? Uh, well, I've done vibrations and damping. Uh, with the second order differential equations. Uh, I haven't done thermodynamics, so I haven't done the uh, heat transfer. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, all of oh, well, that's cool. So it does show that there, there, the there is a link. Data. Yeah, there's a link, uh, there's a link between, between the two. Well, that's, that's fantastic. Thank you very much, Marish, for uh, sharing your dissertation with us. And when, when does it have to be in? 
Uh, it's due in a month. So I, oh, okay. I'm, so you'll be um, so you'll be sat still glued to your computer yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for the for the next month during lockdown. Oh, well, that's thank you, that, that's fantastic. Thank you very much for doing this and this kind of new version of doing it, uh, Master Dolby interviews on online. So yeah, thank you so much again. Good right. luck with your. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with your dissertation and uh, thank you very much from Master Derby. <laughs>